Welcome. On tonight's episode, we review Dune. The spice must flow. <laughs> Insert Hans Zimmer sounds. Welcome. Who was that? Did we get? Did we get him via satellite? We got a stage four oh, navigator. Oh boy. Woo! <laughs> All righty. What's up? Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the GigaHub Weekly Show. Who says we don't get the stars here? <laughs> right. Um, uh. Where we talk about things that matter to us, but may or may not matter to you. I am host one of three and frequent user of Spice, <laughs> Luis Delatore. Uh. I am host two of three and frequent spitter on people. Daikaiji Tony. Wow. Thank you for providing us with all your moisture. High five. Yeah, he gives up, he gives up, he gives up his water. Oh, and, it's, host, and it's graphic. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I am host three of three, Adam Cren. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, nothing special? You don't do spice? No, I didn't have anything. I don't you don't say Alaska? Yeah, I already did the I already did the Guild Navigator. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, that was you? <laughs> Alaska. I, mean, no, I, I thought the Guild Navigator was actually here. <laughs> No. Before <laughs> okay, <clears throat> before we continue, let's talk about our wonderful sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. Yes. Indeed. Where we have everything that your nerdy heart could desire, including comics, t-shirts, uh, manga, board games, figures, statues. We're going to show off some stuff right here. Yeah. We, we have water, all the moisture you need guys, in the all desert. All the moisture you need. Yeah. Do you like G Fuel? We it's, have. It's here. We have... A wealth of water. I yeah, mean, yes. there's so much. If we much were on water. Arrakis, we would be rich. Well, so this place kind of feel like Arrakis. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a message for management to turn up the <laughs> to turn down the heat or turn up the heat. I'm right, not sure. Right. All right, uh, what do you guys got? What are you guys showing off? All right, <clears throat> uh, I got a graphic novel of Noctera with uh, just been signat- optioned for a television show. Yeah, as a Scott Snyder signature in it, or is it Scott Snyder? Did it, did it really? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah it is a Scott Snyder oh. signature. Holy crap. Is yeah. it good? I haven't read it. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty good I'm from the first time. I'm so behind on modern yeah, comics. Bring it in the camera, though. You're kind of outside the camera. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Noctera. Graphic novel just came out. Um, that's issues, what, one through six? Uh, I believe. Let me see. Uh, yeah, one through six. All right. I have, in time for the season, I have the reissue of the hardcover Jeff Loeb Tim Sale Batman the Long Halloween good stuff good stuff Ooh, just in time for that animated nice. movie that came out just in th- and I also have just in time for Halloween as well Valiant's one of Valiant's sort of horror comics Shadow Man Shadow Man back when Valiant was good Shadow, Shadow Man. Man yeah Greg Shadow Man <laughs> right Man. this is about Greg Shadow Man uh, for you lovers of Avatar yeah. uh, of all ages, we have these gorgeous PVC statues. Here is Ang. His name's Ong. Oh, I'm and sorry, Ong. We and only acknowledge the live action movie around here, everybody. <laughs> and he is the Avatar. <laughs> this is blasphemous. Um, right. These are great figures. You guys, this is figures. this is my least favorite character in the whole show. Really? Um, I dislike Ang. What? He's well, kind of annoying. Well, he's a kid. He's yeah. A kid. Well, that's probably why. You, wow. Which, by the way, you can get these for your kids that you like. Yeah. Um, and then here's Katara, which is a uh, uh, this is a gorgeous statue, actually. It I is, really like yeah. the the yeah. waves and all. Look at that! Look how cool that looks. Right. It looks like a Kamehameha she's going for. Almost. Is this supposed to be a? Oh, I think this is supposed to go here. Probably the Ooh, water yeah. ball. There we go. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Anyway, no, seriously though, these these statues are very beautiful. They're reasonably priced. They and you know what? They're they're made of PVC, so they can take a they can, they can take a beating. Yeah, they're not as yeah. fragile. Yeah, as they're not fragile statues. statues. So yeah, yeah, definitely come pick them up for yourself. Good for kids, yeah, or yeah. for your kids or what have you. Uh, Ong and Katara. <laughs> and they're still hard enough to beat someone in the head with, so, yeah. Yeah, wow. you beat someone about the head, yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking of using them for that purpose. <laughs> Your Honor, may I present the murder weapon? It's good to know, yeah. <laughs> good to know. A all bloody right. Anyway, arm. we have all this stuff and more. Uh, just come on down, right. talk to our friendly, knowledgeable staff. They'll be able to point you in the right direction if you need any help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Come on. Okay, you're not you're not a, you're not that big an expert. Stop right. being cool. You're at a comic book store. Right? We try to be casual here. We try to let people shop and do their thing. But if you need help, we are here. Yeah, super yes. super cash, guys. It's a super cash place. You just take your shoes off, leave them by the door, just walk around barefoot. It's totally cool. <laughs> yes, I will, I will. I will help Put you your start feet up. a Put rebellion. Your... Yeah. To to stop a giant fat floating guy and wow. make sure he gets eaten by a worm. <laughs> wow. And I'll say Alaska a lot. 
<laughs> Alaska. Alaska. Right. Alaska. I already picture you standing on the counter just screaming Alaska. So before we get into it, there may be some spoilers. We'll try to keep it spoiler free, but I don't know. I mean, oh, how much can we spoil going, Dune? Yeah. We're going to oh, spoil it. How gonna, much can we spoil it? All right, we're going to spoil it. You heard you heard him talking. Okay. So let's get into it. So yeah, we saw Dune an early We saw Dune private yeah. screening. We right? saw Dune. Cuz I don't know why we're putting emphasis on cuz we we're saw special. Dune. That's yeah. right. All right. Are we better than you? We're not saying that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably, though. <laughs> Are we VIPs? Sure. Better than you? That's debatable. That's debatable. Depends um, on your experience the, in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Dune, uh, directed by Denis Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve. I think that's right. Villeneuve. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think his first name is pronounced Denny. Dennis. Denny. I think it's Dennis. <laughs> Denny. Denny. What kind of drugs, Danny? <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> so, uh, oh, spice, spice. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about the goods. Let's talk uh, about all right. the good. Yeah. Right. We traditionally talk about what's good in a movie. Okay. All right. Um, I like the cinematography of it. Okay. I love the set design. There uh, you go. I like Damn the, it. He's hitting all the points that I had. I like the color <laughs> grading because the color grading, especially in Arrakis, it generally made me feel sweaty and it made my mouth dry. Concerning we didn't have anything to drink in the theater. <laughs> um, I, I legit felt bad for the people living in there, and it was. It definitely conveyed the feeling that it was super hot. Wow. I could have uh, done without the, sp- the coffee made from spit, too. <laughs> uh, <coughs> which is a scene in the movie. But, right. Um, I mean, I, that, that's a lot of what I liked. Was uh, I liked the uh, the color on um, the... Oh, God. Now that the planet is escaping me. The home planet. Rac- uh, uh, Rac- uh, Rac- uh, yeah. Oh, so, like, the color palette there could have been a lot better to portray that it was a much more, like... Growth, lush. pretty prosperous, lush mm-hmm. area. Well, it was green in the '84 movie, right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't show much of it, though. But um, the the color, the color in the desert was fine. I, it it did make it seem like like it was hot as hell there. Uh, I can only imagine what a lot of those actors in those heavy costumes were going through. Even like just wearing well, like, the big uniforms they, or whatever. They didn't necessarily shoot it during hot months either. Deserts do get quite cold. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, maybe. But I'm just saying, it felt hot. It looked hot. Okay. Yeah, imagine David Batista wearing all that makeup and the suit, and like <laughs> he's like right next to like a set that's on fire, and he's going, oh, and then he's probably like sweating his. Luckily you know, enough, I inside. think most of his parts might have been on a set, on a soundstage. Yeah, so did, he might have yeah. been lucky. <laughs> he, did, he didn't look like he was on too many locations. Yeah. Um, I love the designs of everything. Yes. Like everything looked so. 60s to 70s Euro sci-fi design where it's really weird and doesn't look like it would actually work. You know what I mean? Like some of those ships, I'm just like, how does how would this work? Yeah, all the ships are could this like, work? Probably not. But man, does it look beautiful? Yeah, all the ships are shaped like dragonflies for some reason. The the helicopters Orn- are shaped Ornith- like dragonflies. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a design very reminiscent of. Uh, um, uh, why is his name? A, oh my God, Mobius! It's very Mobius. Like a lot of those ships are like a very Mobius design. You're, you're touching. You're starting to touch upon a point I'm going to get to later. Okay. <laughs> about how Dune seems to be influenced by everything that came before it. But yeah. Uh, okay. No, yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I I love those designs. Like yeah. they they don't seem like they'd be functional in real life. Uh, but man, do they look pretty in that movie. Now I was very happy we got Ornithopters. They were in the books. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Of course, David Lynch couldn't really, he didn't have the budget to really do them justice. No. Either did the Sci Fi Channel one. Um, so we actually got Ornithopters. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Hooray for Ornithopters. Yeah. Um, are we done? I didn't want to. Just uh, I thought, your you know what? I thought uh, I liked everyone in the, in their parts. I think everyone did a very good I job. The cast yeah. Was great. yeah. The cast is great. Even Timothy Shalamet. Look, I still don't get the, the, the hype behind Timothy Chalamet, but. Because he's hot. <laughs> Wow, Anthony. He's, okay, he's, cool. You thirsty there, buddy? Well, you want some water, Anthony? Because you sound thirsty, my oh, dude. Too many Robert, Robin covers you're looking at today? <laughs> uh, you got to see these. Mm-hmm. Uh. Okay. Um, yeah, even him. I, I was. I mean, I, I never doubted that he was going to do a bad job. I just I didn't think he was going to do as great a job as... I can see why people really obsess over him now, kind of, but I still I still kind of don't get I it. I don't see him as Jungle Willy Wonka, though. That's that's a, that's a different that's, topic. That's a whole that's a whole yeah. other episode. But man. like, he's, hopefully it's, it's, it not. It seems though. to be like Let's he's being casted in almost. Every, I don't want to say almost everything, but like if they need a role for like a young adventurous person, like Willy Wonka. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a fifteen-year-old yeah. you talk to. Yeah, is that all the good stuff you got? Or? Um, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, yeah, cast was great. Um, ornithopters, ornithopters, big fan of ornithopters, oh, big, huge fan of ornithopters. Um, sounds like. I did mostly like a lot of the ship designs and things. Like you said, they really, I think they did pay a certain homage to the original uh, Jodorowsky and uh, 
Mobius, geez, now I've got okay, yeah. uh, designs, but I think that's also taken from the book, too. I mean, some of that stuff is pretty well defined in the book. Um, I did like that there was more of a relationship between Duncan and Paul. Um, if you're a fan of any of the movies, but especially the books, you know that they did have much more relationship than almost all other versions <laughs> yeah. actually portray. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's probably it. That's a that's it, huh? I, li- I like the it. sound design. The soundtrack, well, it's done by Hans Zimmer. Almost everything yeah. by Hans Zimmer is pretty good. I can't properly judge that until I watch it again on HBO Max later this week. Simply because the theater that we were in was some kind of special Dolby surround. We were in and the it front. Was, yeah. It was too loud. <laughs> going, because, yeah, your she- your seats, our seats were shaking. Yeah, they, I think like, that, what, is There it? were scenes where there was dialogue, and I couldn't tell what they were saying. Now was just, that I couldn't even tell was that by design or is that just because the bass was know. really uh, loud? I, I don't, don't know. Yeah, because I did feel like shaking when like stuff happened, and sometimes but that's it would why fit. I can't properly judge the sound design. Yeah. It would fit sometimes, like when there was a ship taking off or something. Yeah, like yeah. you would feel it, and yeah. then there were times you were like, okay, I, I could do without. Yeah, the, bass. the one. Yeah, that's that reminds me of one another thing I did like is when the worms were sort of on the move and, mm-hmm. the, and the ground started vibrating <laughs> to the point where the yep. sand started to become almost liquid yeah. and they were sinking into it. I'm like, oh, that's Although actually kind of there, cool. there was one moment where I recognized the sound. It sounds exactly like the Mudos from Gods of 2014. The sound like if you remember seeing Gods of 2014 where mm-hmm. Ford's on top of the, like, the train tracks and he's like trying to hide. Did Hans Zimmer do the music? Not for 2014, but... I was going to say, because you do hear composers, they reuse a lot of certain... Sound effects. Um, certain, well, certain um, <coughs> bits of their own music you'll, this, you'll hear. Them this in. movie might have the same sound design as the 2014 Gosling because this is from Legendary Pictures. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Anything else that we liked? <laughs> uh, hmm. I mean, you know, like the story was fine. There was. It was fine. Now, did you read the book? What's that? Did you read the book? I read that book a long time ago, and I read it in parts because it was a lot of book. Okay. I, never I read it did you years read the book? ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's hard, I, to, it's hard to... I've seen the 84 that. version. Right. Um, there are some things I like about this version over the 84 version in terms of the narrative and how they would explain some things with it, with it, with it feeling natural instead of, oh, this is my inner monologue. This, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, this is the voice of my so you, so you bubbles. So yeah, I mean the 1984 film, the David Lynch film, is kind of a mess, mm. which I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he lost the final edit, which is why he all but disowns the movie. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too much into that because we'll go off on a tangent. Um, so how about some things that you didn't like, and who wants to lead off? Ah, uh, okay, <laughs> Duncan, you want to talk about the. Duncan, who's like one of the big elephants in the room. <laughs> sure. You want to jump right into Duncan, or you want to talk smaller, <laughs> smaller problems? Smaller first. potatoes. Uh, okay. That's just uh, you know what? Last start. Okay. And, here, and here's why. Because you guys talked about how you liked some of the colors, uh-huh. like the way the color design was. I actually hated it. Oh, I, I liked it on, on, the, um, on Arrakis. Yeah. I think it fit on Arrakis. Like, it made it look hot and sweltery and just, like, when, not the place to be. Like yeah, when unmoist. They, when they were in the desert, it was fine. I thought. I thought <laughs> unmoist. I thought when they were. I, I thought when they I'm were. Sorry. In, I thought when, yeah. I thought when they were in Arakeen, which yeah. was the city that they never named in this movie, yeah. I thought it was really bad. Um, I, that I, was muddled. I, yeah. I had a problem with the whole film, and and as a matter of fact, it's not just this film. It seems to be a growing trend with films mm-hmm. and art in general, where there's this growing attraction to these very muted. Undersaturated color palettes, and I, I hate, it. I hate <laughs> well, it. Well, and I thought it really was bad in Dune. We we uh, live ugh. in a time where bright colors aren't cool. Okay, um, <laughs> as an example, I have I have a few. Uh, oh boy, I have some. <laughs> What's this? I have some aids right now. Here are. Did you put that on cardstock? <laughs> here's some color palettes. Is that how mad you were? You put it on cardstock? Yes. Here's some color palettes of movies. We have you know the Avengers from 2012. Mm-hmm. You can see there's a wider range of colors <clears> and contrast. <throat> Yeah. Fast, Fast and Furious 7 from 2015. A lot of color, a lot of contrast. Yeah. Star Wars Episode 1 through 9 all together. Um, uh, then, then we go do, right do we want, the, really want to count hold the on last? Now. Hold on, hold on. Lord of the Rings trilogy that was actually criticized for having muted colors. Wide range of colors, right? Yeah. And then we go into The Dark Knight, also very criticized for having a muted palette. 
look yeah. at how much contrast is going on in that movie, right? Right. And then finally, of course, Dune 1984. Look at those colors. Well, yeah, it's a trippy movie. <laughs> a wide range of colors, right? <laughs> right. Now, when I compare this to the new Dune film, um, <laughs> this is happening, everyone. <laughs> Here's the 1984 Dune, right? Wide range of colors. Now let's compare that to the recent Dune. Is that a barcode? It looks like you ran out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Can I see that? Okay, to be fair, this isn't real. Okay, I did okay. I did make this up. Can I can I see this? <laughs> but that's how I felt about the movie. Like everything seems so muted. But worse did than you that. Just take a picture of your window with all the No. <laughs> with no, all no, the... no. no. Um, everything felt so muted to me and undersaturated that it really caused the palette to almost blur together. And I, I don't like it. I don't mm. like that trend. Sure. Maybe it's a personal thing. But anyway, well, I'm, let's, I let's fi- get past the colors unless you had something. Well, here's the thing is you can't take anything seriously if it's super colorful in movies now, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's the, yeah. that's the well, issue. The MCU is a thing. Yeah, and like yeah. a lot of those, especially with, this, with a lot of the MCU's choppy CGI's in their movies, yeah. like... It really puts co- like movies with like a high color palette and a negative light. With something like Dune, given that this is the guy who directed Blade Runner twenty forty nine, I figured that it would be a case of a lot of the movies gonna be dark and not really as saturated, and we'll have one or two shining moments where the color saturations up there skyrocketed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all for using color to accentuate parts of a story, but this just felt undersaturated, and I didn't like it. Mm. Wait for the part two in the movies. Yeah, if it ever gets made, we'll see. (laughs) Um, What are some other negatives you guys felt was going on there? Uh... Well, in the uh, Jason Momoa. Okay, Jason Momoa. Are we going to jump into Jason? We're going to jump into Jason Duncan? Momoa's part. Yeah, I guess um, we're going. I guess we're okay, going. Okay, we're going uh, to Duncan. We're going to Duncan. It's obvious that they paid a pretty penny for Jason Momoa. Yes, right. and it's obvious that they extended his part because <laughs> yes. they paid a pretty penny for Jason Momoa. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Um, because if you're going to pay for Jason Momoa, you're going to get you're your gonna money. Get you're going to try to get your money's worth. worth. Yeah. Okay, so in the book, when did this character die? Like specifically, the at what initial po- attack. Of the Arhakans. Mm, yeah. Okay, and he in, didn't make it out on one of the, the ornithopters. Yeah. Yes, in this movie, he makes it out and he gets to live a little bit more. And he actually rescues. Yeah, he rescues Jessica and Paul. Yeah. Jessica and Paul, and, and he has one fight scene in the corridor where he just he just goes Jason Momoa all out on him. Yeah, here's the spoiler: and he dies. Yes, like he does <gasps> in the book, just later on. Yeah, he just makes a it later, almost yeah. till the end of the movie. Um, however, as Tony, you started saying, his scene was just really not only obvious. I mean, it was just... It was so Hollywood. It was very, yeah, very, it, yeah, it was this very moment like, ooh, you know what would be a really cool moment? If we had Jason Momoa just have this last it, stand. Yeah, it, it was sticks, very yeah. cheesy. It wasn't even good as Boromir's very predictable yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's Well, out. Sean Bean fucking killed it. He killed that part. Yeah. He killed that. But that, it sticks that out like a part. sore tumb compared to the rest of the movie. It, it really it, does. It, yeah, it does. It is... As serious as that movie is, that part is very like yeah. actiony. It feels, un, yeah, like it, it's it feels like another movie. It's something out of it's <laughs> yeah. something out of like a uh, 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 like a Fast and Furious type movie, right? And they yeah. just stuck it into this right. very serious, you gotta have Jason Momoa. somber and, uh, movie. I tried my hardest not to laugh at the specific scene where he gets stabbed, yeah. he gets back he's up, like, yeah, with yeah, a yeah, knife yeah. in him. I'm like, what I, is happening? The, I've seen this before in bedroom films. <laughs> He basically became Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, uh, um, I like that he actually shaved for it because to wear the still to wear the mask, you would have to shave to get a good seal. So oh, that was a little huh. detail. Now it could have been coincidental. I don't know, but it was a little detail that made sense. Sure. However, like once he got to Arrakis, he was clean shaven. However, you um, said that Josh Brolin's character did not look like how he did in the book, and neither did Patrick Stewart. Uh, true. Gurney Halleck in the book is kind of chunky. Um, he was built more like the Thufer Howitt, <laughs> um, but he was he was the best fighter bar none. Like he was even better than Duncan. Yeah, but not um, best enough to bring a pug into a battlefield. So. <laughs> he was no Patrick Stewart. Right? He's no Patrick. Um, there is a Patrick Stewart Easter egg in this. And movie. actually, and uh, is there? Is yeah, there? the the painting in the beginning when Duncan is eating dinner with his mother and. Um, uh, he tries doing. He tries using the voice for the first time, and like right. the, ba- the, the painting on top of the fireplace, it's a picture of Patrick Stewart. Is it? No, I didn't, I didn't I see that. that again. I didn't yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah I, I'm like, ha ha ha! It's Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Is that? Wait a um, minute. We saw this days ago. You've been keeping this to yourself <laughs> since right, days yeah. ago. Damn. Just to just to make us look like real asses on this show, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> um, Duncan actually was a lot. I'm he kidding. Was, yeah, he totally was leaner. He was much leaner in the. Well, Josh too. Brolin is. 
pretty lean guy even for his age. Yeah, he's well, he's, yeah, he's he he was a good Gurney though because Gurney was older. Yeah, and he was still better than Duncan though in the books. Um, uh, anything else with uh, old Duncan? I liked that the relationship was better, but yeah, there was some pretty bad. stuff. Uh, yeah, they just kind of stuck that. Think, like it's like it's like a it's like you said it's it's very Hollywood. Yeah. to just throw that scene. And again, it's because they paid so much money for Jason Momoa. And, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure Jason Momoa is going to come back eventually. Because spoiler alert, I guess he comes back in the book. Well, he, yeah, he comes back a lot actually. They clone him. The there's a planet called Ix that builds machines that Ix. may or may not be illegal. Mm. You'd have to understand the history of that universe to. For, so I don't go off on too much of a tangent, but um, they basically gift Paul with Duncan, a uh, clone of Duncan. They Two point They call him Golas, but he actually has like cybernetic eyes and some other cybernetic parts. Mm. Uh. And he actually dies a few more times and keeps getting brought back. And every time he gets a little weirder and, oh. uh, and odd. Yeah. So Jason Momoa, he probably. I like feet yeah. now. Yeah. So he's he's good for like all the sequels. He's gonna. He's, yeah, he probably signed a contract already. So right. yeah. Um. So <laughs> while we're on the topic of characters, I I need to bring up Lady Jessica. All right. Okay. Um. I thought Rebecca Ferguson was great. She was. Casting. She was good. Yeah. Um. Lady Jessica really. That's a tough part to cast and. Having seen her in other movies, especially Dr. Sleep, I knew she was a good choice for Jessica. However, and you guys not having really read the book or, well, you saw the 84 movie, um, that the way Lady Jessica was portrayed in this movie was so off. Like, completely wrong. Is she supposed to be a total... They screwed her up bad. Is she supposed to be a total B-word for a female dog? Uh, (laughs) Just say the (laughs) B-word. Okay, (laughs) is she a total bitch? It's not that. This movie, to me, made her... It made her seem fearful and... Very unsure of what she was doing. And reactionary. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, And then on top of that, when they did get to Arrakis and they were separated... From you know after the whole attack and everything, and they were trying to kind of get their bearings. She com- seemed completely ignorant of Fremen mythology, even though it was already established she was a Bene Gesserit, and yeah. that the, and it was actually established through dialogue that the Bene Gesserit manipulated Fremen mythology. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But she seemed to be ignorant of that, which, she, I which think, was totally different. I think they probably, in all versions mm-hmm. she fully exploited that. They probably did that place for her and her son. to make her seem more, uh, <sighs> I don't bad. know. Uh, it was so unlikely. Likeable, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's not her fault. She's being manipulated. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I didn't like it. I mean, it was just. So, no, no, I, I didn't. It, it made Lady Jessica mm-hmm. seem much more like a traditional female. And in 2022 in a movie, mm-hmm. when you already have a character that was written in the 60s who is a legitimate badass. Yeah. And you just kind of ignore that except the fact that she can fight. Other than that, she seemed really fearful and almost weepy. Right. Uh, it was just, I didn't like it. I, it was bad. I mean, I mean, bad. Rebecca Ferguson did a very good job with the part. Oh, yeah, Dude, yeah. Like, playing that part, she did great. But that wasn't Lady but Jessica. But that wasn't Lady Jessica. Yeah. Right. So that was one of my complaints there. Oh, um, um, another one. Oh, well, actually, you, I noticed this one when we were in the theaters. Though. You had a yeah. problem with Dr. Uh, what's his, I forgot his name? Dr. Yui? Yui. Like, what was the wrong with his character? Um... Dr. Yui in this movie seemed to have psychic abilities. Um, what? Yes. His, his medical care, he, he almost like he was like using Vulcan right, right. mind so melding put, to kind of... Yeah. I thought he was that, just massaging their heads. That's he what never I, touched them, though. He was like, mm, his heart is strong, my lady. Yeah, whatever. he did. He did. He, did he, he, put, he, his, he put his hands him? on him, yeah. Yeah. I thought he was like, oh, but he gave me he a He did like the Vulcan... Boy. No. <laughs> no. That, oh, that would have been creepy. <laughs> but yeah. it, it did seem... I'll all, tend to you, Paul. Now, I could be wrong, but it, it seemed to me... Mm-hmm. Did it seem like this to you guys? Like he had psychic abilities? Like he could read Paul's freaking... So, yeah, so I thought that... First of all, for a doctor, he didn't have anything. He didn't have yeah, any which, like sort of machines or any kind right. of oh, equipment yeah. Yeah. up until up until the, the, when he found the uh, and, the king, Paul's dad. And the reason why this is important mm. is, and I, I just have to do this real quick, is thinking machines were outlawed. They had to they had to do things themselves um, because there was a there was actually a robot war like thousands of years before this. So ah, thinking okay. machines were outlawed. Mm. They and the and. And humanity was very much about improving themselves. Um, but it, they come to find out that men men and women, because of biology, could only do things from a psychic standpoint, for lack of a better term, which is certain ways, which is why you had the Bene Gesserit yes. and why the guild navigators could fold space. Men could not 
could not develop the abilities that women could and vice versa. Right. Yeah. Okay. So back to Dark Knight. I mean, that's all and I was So you have to say, understand so. that. Yeah, he had no mech. They could have machines. Well, what I'm but saying is. The machine could he, only do readings. He didn't, it couldn't think seem to him. have any uh, doctor's equipment. Right. Exactly. So, like, whenever exactly. he came to, when he came in, in, in the first scene, when he right. showed up to uh, to diagnose Paul to see if everything was wrong with him, yeah, he did do, like, the, the kind of Vulcan mind meld yeah. thing with his fingers. Yeah, yeah. And when he did that, I'm like, okay, is he's, uh, he's a diagnosis. Gnosis machine? Like, yeah, what, yeah. what? what is... what? I didn't know what they were trying to do. There. Yeah, I I got what they were trying to do. I just, I don't know that I was a fan of it. I, it. It seemed to me like they were trying to push like he had psychic abilities, which under... And maybe I'm wrong, but that undermines exactly why Paul was so special. Mm. Because Paul's supposed to be the Because male. Paul can do both. Yeah. He could do everything men or women and male and women. He's the one. He's the Quitsat Harak. Use the Oh, he's the force. Oh, don't yeah. get We're going to get there. Yeah. I hated that scene too. Okay. Um, um let's but get yeah, to, Dr. Yui, that that bothered me. Uh let's get into the way the worms are portrayed. I like the 84 version more just because it's a practical effect. They're puppets. Uh the worms, you said yourself that worms look like Sarlacc pits. They yeah. did look like walk. The, they did like moving star like that. The biggest yeah. problem, yeah, the biggest problem I had with the worms is, yeah, it seemed like they had a interior mouth that closed, but that outer mouth was just open with all the like hairs. Yeah. It, well, and they it, and it like went into the sand that way, and I'm like, how? Maybe I missed something. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like a big. It, like, maybe I missed something. It, it seemed to me like its mouth closed with the needles. Like the the little but it needles, was inside. right? Would and just, the outside was would just, like just a... well, the way that I interpreted yeah, yeah, yeah. it, unless I missed something, is that the way it closes its mouth. So it's got this big gaping orifice thing. right yeah. in the front, sarlacc thing, and then it's got all the needles. But uh-huh. the needles would like move. Yeah. So the way I figured it is, it would close its mouth by like closing up all the needles. That's what I it looked know. like. I didn't. It, it didn't not, look like yeah, it ever closed its the, mouth. Uh, it looked like the something ones, closed inside. The ones in the '84 movie with like the the folded sort of yeah, that was cool. Demogorgon yeah. flaps. That was cool. as I guess yeah. is the best way I could put it. That was that was much yeah. better. Yeah. But oh, um, speaking of worms, one scene that I did not like in comparison to the '84 <laughs> version. Wow. Ba- basically, when they go out, passionate. When they go out scouting and they have to like take out all the miners out of the vehicle. Right. To basically save them from getting eaten by the worm. Right. The way it's played out yes. in this version is it's unnecessarily dramatic for the yes. sake of it. In the 84 version... And it you, never... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. In oh, the 84 finished. version, it does its job. It tells you that the worms are pretty dangerous. And powerful. And powerful, yes. It did not give that feeling in this. It just kind of like... It, and then it was gone. It, so, it, it adds dramatic <clears throat> tension for no reason. And for then, no reason, right. Uh, version, uh, like, well, oh, I, don't, did I, I don't think it's for yeah. no reason. I think it's not for a good reason. Okay, which is yeah, that, um, Which is that you got to remember that this movie is not made for you. Right. It's not made for you. It is not made for me. It's it is made, made for the hu- compared to us. It's made for the the other hundred people who are gonna pay to go see this dude yeah, movie. Yeah, I guess you know yeah. what I mean. We, you gotta give them a little something. If you didn't put the sandworm part in there and you didn't make it all dramatic, it would have been a slow going movie, right. and I think it really would have lost a general audience, Maybe. which is what movies care about. But is a general audience thing, and not the five nerds that are going to go and, see this. And movie. relating to that point, though, it seemed to me watching it as I was trying to like digest the scenes as they were playing out Mm. it almost seemed like some scenes we were unnecessarily spoon-fed information yeah and then other scenes were so vague yes and i'm thinking like if if i had not read the book and seen every other version of this would i even know what was going on (laughs) yeah i mean like (laughs) there could be another reason for that so i mean maybe maybe yeah but to go back on that scene where the first worm is introduced in this one um paul just like oh the spice Dramatic tension. I'm being. I'm being like. I'm just oh, standing. I'm, I'm standing uh, around just to like get rescued later. I'm like, why? Are you, why are you adding this unnecessary amount of dramatic tension just to, to just to tell audience the effect of spice? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. All, all we needed was just to see the worm destroy the carrier. Yeah. That's it. The, the whole point was the, to show the what power of the worms. Yeah. I again, I think that's for general audiences yeah. not to be like, bored. General audiences like, oh. We need to, they need they need to know what the spice can do. I'm sure most people who go see this movie have either only seen the '84 version or have not read the book or seen the movie at yeah. all. Yeah, but that was my argument. That's my argument, though. Like I said, some things seemed so vague. Yeah, it almost assumed you had to already have read the book. That could have been. That movies. could have just been for you. You know yeah, what I mean? Man, and when uh, I mean you, I mean the people who read the book. Or yeah. that could have just been to explain it. 
set up things in the second movie, which there is a second movie. I had no idea. Yes, in the beginning, there it was says, gonna be Dude, a second movie. Part one. Part one. I was like, what? There's well, a part two? I, yeah. I, I figured. I knew that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, figured I had no idea. I didn't keep up with the movie, so I didn't, like, with the movie news as it was coming c- out. So. Considering that the third act of the 84 Virgin condenses a lot, a lot and yeah. under yeah. 10 minutes, then I, I figured yeah, that yeah, it would be in two parts. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, about that. <laughs> and since you brought up the third act of the 84 version, this movie really had no third act. It was like it had a second act, and then it had sort of an abbreviated third act, which felt more like a denouement, and mm. it was just done, and it was over, and it was unsatisfying. And now, now when I say this, I want to be clear. Um, downer endings can be satisfying. Yes. yes. This is a downer ending that was unsatisfying. Is it a downer be- ending? Because it didn't feel like an ending. Yes, um, As a matter of fact, it kind of felt baity because yes, Zendaya's character says, yes. "Oh, when I, well, okay." When when she said, "It's oh, just starting," this is something. just the beginning. Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, I, yeah. I know this is going to be the ending." Which means the movie is probably going to be three hours. <laughs> the next one, um, would you call that a downer ending? Well, I mean, it wasn't a positive ending, certainly. No, but I don't. I wouldn't call it a downer ending. True. Well, true and true. I know that the only reason it didn't feel like an ending is so it can lead into the second one. I'm right, sure, right. Um, but. Uh, like I yeah, thought, it was, I, I thought it was gonna end at the point where Paul drinks the blue water and he has, all of a sudden has control of the worms. I uh, thought it was gonna end at that point, and then the war begins. Yeah, well, yeah, that that's kind of where I thought. it was I mean, they could have if they just cut out that Jason Momoa scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it saved, like, sorry, Jason minutes, Momoa. Yeah. I don't dislike you. I'm no, sorry. no, I don't have a problem with him. I didn't. Even, I don't dislike I Khal Drogo. I didn't even Khal mind Drogo. him as Duncan, even he was a little too big and probably well, certainly too old. But it was just the fact that. Yeah, well, we already talked about it. All right. Yeah. Um, anything else? Well, I got a couple characters since we kind of talked about Why can't we like too. anything on the show? Um, <laughs> the Baron, uh, Skarsgård, great casting. Honestly, other than him just glowering for a few scenes, he seemed wasted. As did, he, as did I will Dave say, Bautista I, as Beast Raban. Yeah, I will, I will, there's barely in I it. I will say, when, felt wasted. when Baron Harkonnen was in the steam room, was in his little steam thing, I was like, where did they get video of me in a steam room? <laughs> <laughs> Although, like, <laughs> like yeah, my, I was disappointed on their on-screen presence because yeah. in comparison to the 84 version where they're just yeah. batshit crazy. Now, and, yeah. Now, now, yeah. Now, admittedly, that's hard to top. And, I, you know, that goes into another argument. The 84 version, I mean, David Lynch... He set the bar on a lot of that stuff so weirdly high yeah. That, yeah. that the that the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries almost ripped off some scenes shot for shot. Yep. And this movie clearly was influenced by it, whether they were trying to avoid it or or do something it similar. It seemed yeah. like the 84 version had no problems being weird. Yeah. And this new version was it, trying to stay away from, from being, from being yes. weird. So I wanted yeah. to be a more grounded version yeah, of well, Dune. Well, a more marketable version of Dune. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you like space movies? Come see this space uh, yeah, movie. Yeah, poor Dave Batista, I thought was wasted. Yeah, they really Donny Donny end him up. Oh, I mean, he's oh barely yeah. in Donnie it. Donny in Rogue he's, One, yeah. He's yep. barely in it. Didn't do anything. He just yep. had a few lines. He'll probably have a bigger Hope part in oh, part he two, should. but he should. He uh, yeah, even, he didn't do much in this. He, yeah, which he is, he doesn't even which sucks. Cause I like I mean, Dave Batista. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even cut, eat cow tongue, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, where's Fade? That's, and, that's my next question. <laughs> where was, where's where the, was Fade where? route? Where was Sting as Fade? Um, or, or anybody as Fade? Couldn't we just bring back Sting as Fade? Because we just bring back Sting. Been cool, He'd right? jump in in the bikini. Were, you know yeah. he would. Were there any little people in this movie? Because I remember the 84 version <laughs> I, having a whole bunch I, of I, was a little I didn't see any little people. No, there was no little people. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that bothered me is this film was about two and a half hours long. Right. And it only covered about half of the book. That's a lot of half and hours it long. Didn't, it didn't feel like it had a good grasp of everything. And what I mean by that is, and tell me if I'm wrong. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong. The focus was certainly on Paul Duncan and, and Leto. Yeah. Which is fine. But, right. like, all these rich, colorful characters, for the most part, ignored they got interesting actors to play them, but then yeah. they were just mostly ignored. Like for, Oscar Isaac. For how it was mostly ignored. Yeah. Friggin' uh, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Devries, Isaac. which yeah. was uh, uh, Dalmatian. Like, I can't think of his first name. He played Polka Dot Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was mostly ignored. And, I mean, he, and he was and killed off and real wasted. quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did die there. Right. The, no, no. But I mean, waste yeah. killed off too soon. Like, compared to oh. the way Brad Dorff yeah. played the character, Brad Dorff, like, he was like a total was, junkie. And yeah, and I mean, for as few scenes as he had in that movie, he made a mark. 
Yeah. Where poor, mm-hmm. poor repetitive reason this was just there and gone. And again, this isn't this isn't uh, this isn't an insult on the actors oh, and the no, way no, they no, play no, their parts. This no. is this is just the way the parts are written. Like, right. Unfortunately like, for them, the only, for such unfortunately for such talented people. Yeah. yeah, and like the only scene where Oscar Isaac's uh, his performance was like really good was with the scene of him and Paul before they go to Arrakis. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like you'll only be what I need you to be, my son. And like yeah. that's like that was probably, a good scene. That was, mm-hmm. that was like the best of Oscar Isaac's in this movie. Oh my god, also, leave, leave also, it to Oscar Isaac to, to kill it. Was, I love was, Oscar Isaac. Why was the Atreides sigil a bull? That's supposed to be the Harakonin sigil? I, I was wondering what the that's hell is with confusing. the bull. Can you push your glasses that's up when little, you say that? That was a little confusing. I was never, say it again, but push the glasses <laughs> no, no, no. up. I was wondering what the hell was with the bull. Like, is there like a symbolism behind it? Well, or? the symbolism in the book, although it's very subtle, is the idea that, yes, Leto's father did die in a bull because he used to duel bulls or whatever. But the Harkonnen symbol was a bull. And, of course, Leto was also killed by a bull. That's the whole symbolism. Ah. Very subtle, but it's there. But in here, it wouldn't it, it really... Seemed, it didn't even seem like they tried to match that up on any level. Yeah. It weird. did show a lot of the bull, though, right? They yes. kept zooming yeah, in yeah. on like the taxidermy head and the yeah. statue of the bull. Yeah. Another, another part that made me like wonder, okay, why are you showing this shot over and over again? The knife. The biggest Paul, he has visions. He sees the future. Right, he right, right. thinks he gets stabbed by Zendaya or someone else. Like, why would you keep showing the shot of the knife that keeps stabbing me? Like, oh, the knife. And all of a sudden, I'm getting flashbacks to the 84 version where what? I'm getting unnecessary. Hey, and what? I, no, no, I, I was trying to let you finish. Sorry. Oh, no, like, I'm getting flashbacks to the 84 version where you get unnecessary close ups of things that we already n- kind of got a general idea of. Yeah. Yeah, they did beat that into the ground a little bit. But I thought, at least I felt what he was trying to do was show us that. The future isn't set, and depending on Paul's choices, things could go drastically one way or the other. And I also think that now, maybe I'm wrong, because uh, a friend of mine, Greg, said it wasn't him, but I thought it was. And his visions were there was a Fremen teaching him. I thought that was Jameis, and then he ended huh. up killing Jameis. Yeah. Mm. Because I thought he was trying to show, did you think that was Jameis? Mm, no, I no, did not. I didn't no? think no. it was Jameis, yeah. Well, maybe I'm wrong then, but I thought he was trying to show how his different decisions can play out differently. I don't know. Right. Mm. But oh. it, it didn't seem to connect well, and because when when Paul would hit sort of these focal points that he couldn't see past, I don't think Jameis was one of those. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and speaking of Paul's visions of the future, a lot of it is just sequel baiting. Like, yeah, yeah. like, oh, Paul yeah. on the battlefield, then Paul yeah. making out with Zendaya. Like, now, one yeah. complaint that didn't come from me, but came from somebody who has not read the book, um, which made sense now because I didn't think about it, was that it was really hard to tell who was who when the fighting started. There was no real differentiation between how anybody looked. Yes. Right. And I was like, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. In comparison yeah. to the 84 version yeah. where you could definitely tell. Where they tell. were clearly... Yeah. You know, the whole Sardaukar thing. Um, in the original, they were actually dressed in Harkonnen livery because that was the whole point. Right. They were supposed to be disguised as Harkonnens. Okay. But uh, anyway. Yeah. So, so, okay. Without comparing this movie to the 84 version, right. to the book, let's right. just give it like a clean sort of look at this movie. How did, how did you feel without comparing it? Is it hard to not compare it to the 84 version or even the book? It is very hard. It is. Right. It is very hard. Okay. Yeah. And I mean... When I when I look at it for, the, at a movie, they're both part of my childhood. To be honest, <laughs> when I look at this as a movie on its own, it's probably a seven out of ten or six out of ten because there's still one glaring issue that I like had to like try remembering what I just heard. Okay, so Paul and his mom escape, right? And mm-hmm. they're left with um the do- the doctor left them with a bag of supplies and right. I, I clearly I swear re- they said I, still suits. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I distinctly remember hearing the doctor say, Oh, I left you with still suits. I'm like, Okay. And they just go out they in didn't the have desert. Them. Maybe he might have yeah. he might have meant that he left them somewhere for them, yeah. but uh, you couldn't tell. I, I was also wondering where their suits were yeah. until they actually found and them. And it was established before that they die in the desert without the still suits. So, yes. and, they oh, were, yeah. and they were like, wan- and they were one. Yeah, and they were wandering around the desert for a long time without the still suits. Yeah. Um, Okay. So a like few did, things comparing it to 84, like, though. Like, did the movie totally forget not, about Not enough it? cat milking, not enough heart plugs, not enough staying in a plastic bikini, oh and not God. enough pugs. Yes. Okay. Well, not not every, not not every, every movie could use more pugs. That's yes, true. Yes, and that's not true. enough shots of a fetus, like a close-up <laughs> close fetus shot going. Right, right. Every movie could use more um, shots of fetuses. My last complaint, though, and I have to say this one, is Denis, Denis 
He put in a use the force Luke scene, and that really pissed me off. What kind of drugs, Danny? You, you uh, use the he, use the voice, Paul. He mm-hmm. no, it wasn't even that. It was the the ornithopter when Liet Kine said, "Fly five thousand feet. It's mostly du- dust. You can hide in the storm." And instead, he flies to the middle of the storm, and then he hears the voice. Oh like, yeah! You have to go with the flow. Oh, or yeah, whatever. The whole, yeah, when he takes it. And the, then I'm yeah. like, this mother the force, put Luke. a use the force Luke moment in here. Oh my F god! F you, man. That's not how oh, the, that irritated the hell out of that's me. That's not how the voice works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Are we, are we ready? Reviews? Are we ready for rating? We should because. We are you ready for rating? So what? What I always keep forgetting is the rating four stars or five. It's four five stars, stars, right? Four stars, but we can do half. I thought we did five. Did we always do five? Oh, four. Stars. Okay. Four, uh, okay. four star out of four stars. What? What's going on? What are you guys giving? I'd probably give it a three because it's like okay. Not, That's without, pretty high. Without well, maybe it's high praise. It's high praise, bro. Okay, well, without no, knowing... No, no, hey, if you want to give it a three, give it a three. Without it's knowing this... Okay, without 100% knowing the source material, I can enjoy it for what it is, but there's still some parts of it that maybe go, what, what is going on? And, like, didn't, it felt like... Uh, again, with the still suits scene, like, did the rest of the movie forget that they had still suits? <laughs> right, right, right. Was there, like, another cut of the movie right, where... Yeah. Like, well, then again, that half of that stuff happened because the whole Jason Momoa scene, because I think they get their, they get their still suits when... Duncan rescues them. Right. Yeah. Oh, they don't okay. even get the still suits till they get to the ecology station. Oh in, no! In this movie. So, oh. so three stars. Yeah. Three out of four stars. You want to yeah. go? Or you want me to go? <laughs> you can go. Uh, I will say this movie is missing a lot <laughs> that the '84 movie does. It doesn't have to be exactly like the '84 no, version, of but not. it definitely did. It was definitely missing a lot of like. I don't know, like the fun of the '84 version, a lot of the weirdness of the '84 a lot of the version. Yeah. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Is it Star Wars for adults? It's no, I don't, no. <laughs> it's not. Exactly. It's not great. Right. But it's not bad. I out of four stars, I would, I would dare say about a. I would give it a uh, one and a half stars. Mm-hmm. I was almost gonna give it two, but. Uh, I'm going to go one and a half stars. I think what really made the movies great was the des- a lot of the designs um, mm-hmm. and of the cast, obviously. Yeah, the, cast the cast was, was really fantastic, quiet, regardless yeah, of how really. they were written. Yeah. Uh, so, uh-huh. I, 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 yeah. and, and you know what? I didn't, I didn't absolutely dread being there like I do in some movies. Yeah, yeah that's, true. Uh, so, that's true. So I'm going to go ahead and go, go one and a half stars. Okay. Like... Um, Oh, sorry. Like the only design from this movie I didn't like was just the worms, and that was about it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like the worms. Yeah. Um, so I I have to try to reel it in, and again, not try to compare it in my head, and just try to look at it objectively. And even then, it seemed to just it seemed to be condensed, like like the, it got it, like it lost a lot in the editing room. It really felt that way to me. Yes, mm-hmm. like a lot was lost to try to get the time down, which probably hurt it. And because of that, I have to give it Fifty Shades of Beige. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which is what? Negative? Is that negative? Is that going to the negatives? I don't understand. Uh, no. Fifty Shades of Beige. No. Um, you made those <laughs> specifically for this, and I love I it. Did, I'm I all did. here for it. Um, you know, I I just... <sighs> <laughs> Come on, man! You're 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 killing me! I, you're killing I, me because like I need to know. What there, you were, there were certain aspects I wanted to really like. Sure. And the more I thought about it, the less I liked it. Oh boy! Now I'm gonna watch it later in the week on HBO Max mm-hmm. when it comes out officially, and hopefully maybe I'll change my view. But right now, one star. One Damn. star. The more okay. I thought about it, the less I liked it. There okay. were things about it I liked, but they they were they were. They were details as opposed yeah. to a well, complete movie. I may be a bit biased just because the director b- directed Blade Runner twenty four or nine, but I didn't like that the, one the, the scenery and cinematography made me drool. That that that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's All right. Well, those are that's our that's review. Us. That's it. That's yeah. our review of Dune. If you feel differently or if you agree with us, drop us a comment right. uh, and let us know what you guys think. Uh, do hit the like and subscribe button Please. or dislike and subscribe right. button right. Uh, if you uh, if you could. That would really help us out. Or subscribe and then unsubscribe. Yeah, whatever. Just, <laughs> whatever. just come on. Help, help us out with the algorithm here. Right, right. Yes. Um, and then, uh, any plugs before we go? Uh, be sure to check out Toku Titancast and Nerd Cage Live. They're good people. I occasionally jump in them. So nice. yeah, nice. Um, T Public slash GoFenris Oddity Collectibles. Nice. Cool T-shirts. Nice. That's mm-hmm. really all I got. Nice. Yeah, I have nothing scheduled. Uh, okay. coming up this time you guys events oh, yeah. nice. well, one last thing one thing that I liked about this version over the 84 the way they explained spit 
Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, because that's in, a detail we in, the, in the 84 version, the guy it's spits into mom's eyes and it just, missed, I, yeah. I, the guy spits mm -hmm. into mom's eyes. I was totally weirded out by it. I'm like, what the hell is that for? <laughs> a little guy, spittle for your face. Then, then, then he was then, such a great Baron. How do you how do you how do you top <laughs> Kenneth McMillan? Yeah. Oh my God, he's still the best Baron. <laughs> and then in the new version, they actually explain the context behind why right. spitting is an honorable thing, or and, or it means a lot, especially to the Fremen, anyway. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Cool. That's our review of Dune. Uh, again, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And uh, there you go. Get some moisture from Tony there. He until, loves you guys. Until next time. Until next time. We'll see the you guys next week. Must